that is musical nectar what a beautiful piece hello everyone welcome to keyboard skills pro uh, if it's your first time here welcome to the channel please do hit the subscribe button my name's tom i'm a uk based professional musician and in this music lesson we're going to show you how to play bach's famous prelude in c this is probably one of the most famous and widely learned keyboard pieces anywhere in the world. We're going to take a look through the arpeggios, the broken chords, the, the different harmonies and show you how to play it. So if you'd like to learn this piece, come over the keyboard with me now and uh, let's get started. So this is the Prelude in C major by Johann Sebastian Bach. The index number is BWV846. So first of all, what we've got to understand is that it's in 4-4 four, four time. So there's four beats to every bar. But what Bach does, and you can see this here in the first line of the music, you can see that he makes use of semiquavers. Now this is really important because what he's doing, he's slicing and dicing the music up to get as much use out of the music as he can. The important thing with this piece of music is to make sure that it flows. Okay, it's got to flow, it's got to be very smooth, it's got to be very gentle. And there's a kind of a sweet spot. I've heard various recordings. Some people play it quite slowly. Some people tend to sort of flow through it a bit quicker. I tend to go for a sort of a slow medium kind of tempo because I think the beautiful changes of the harmonies are so lovely. It's great to hear how they fly. So, so what we've got at the beginning, we've got a treble clef and a bass clef. So that, that's good news. And we can see that we haven't got any sharps or flats in between the clefs and the C. The C, by the way, is another way of writing for four time. Now, um, this um, piece of uh, music uses broken chords throughout. So when we uh, actually play it, once you've learned the first bar, that's kind of the established pattern for the whole piece. And in fact, there is uh, certain things about Bach and Chopin and Mozart that you kind of get to know the composer's style, if you if you like, and so this this piece has his style all over it. Um, but every bar follows suit. So how does it work? Well, first of all, look, let's take a look. We're going to do this hands together at the same time because it kind of needs both hands together. And um, <clears throat> we're going to start off by playing middle C with our third finger, and then we're going to play the E, which is actually written in the treble stave. Look, but the stick is uh, the stem of the note is going down. Look, and we're going to hold the E down with our thumb. Okay. Now, sometimes these are written on the left hand in this particular version, uh, which we provided a link to, by the way, um, in the description. Um, you can download this uh, free of charge on the website I downloaded it from. And um, here we go with the first note. Look, so middle C, one E. Okay, C, E. Now, the important thing to remember here is that the rest above the middle C is a um, semi-quaver rest and above that we've got a quaver rest. Now that just basically means on the C don't play anything else. The E follows on straight after it a quarter of a beat later. So what I want you to imagine is, is that we're taking our four beats okay and we're going to chop them up into four quarters okay so as you know normally we count crotchets one two three four we then count quavers one and two and three and four and and i like to count semi quavers the quarter notes as one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a and so that's how we're going to do it so we're going to start by going one e and then and uh, two E and uh, now we'll look at that chord in a second. But I want you to notice here how look I'm holding the C down. You can use the second finger if you want. The third finger is nice, but the second finger is okay. Um, if you use the um, the third finger though, it gives you an extra finger for a little moment in the coming up. So we're going to hold the C note down, and then straight after it. So it's not one and it's one E straight after. So that's the first. Set quarter and then the second quarter da da okay and once you've played those two you hold them down for dear life for the remainder of the beat and also the second beat so these hold for the first two beats of the bar one e and a, two e and a. okay and then on the third beat you'd repeat the same pattern look c e and just hold them down because the, the the c underneath is a minim that's worth two counts and the um, the E is tied 
to the E next door. So don't go, don't do that because that E, we don't play it, but we hear it sound as it molds with the, the first one thanks to the tie line. Okay, now that's, that's, that's basically how the left hand goes all the way through. One E and a two E and a three E and a two E and. Let's do the next bar, look. C, D, there we go. Now don't worry, that, that sounds distorted, but don't worry. And let's look at the next line, look. B, D, and you get the idea as you're going on. One E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a three E and four and one and two and uh, okay etc so it works very very nice really really good sound so so that's that's primarily how the left hand works virtually all the way through so simply a case now reading the two notes which mostly are in this portion of the bass clef so not too difficult to read um, and by the way if you're probably thinking oh is, am i going to be able to play this well if you've been playing for maybe two or three years or so and you're hovering around that sort of grade top end of grade uh, grade one maybe going into grade two grade three area then this this piece you'll be able to certainly get your head around no problems at all okay now what Bach basically does he then takes some chords and breaks them into three pieces and then reuses those three pieces to really get as much out of these four beats now as we say how do composers do that well let's see what would happen if he hadn't used all the beats in the bar so what well, we're going to go one two three four okay that's four crotchets look da 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 so that's not particularly exciting look so you can see that's a kind of a much easier version i'm just sort of picking some notes at random two three four so there's the crotchets now let's do some quavers one uh, so one and two and one and two and one and so you can now start to hear in quavers we start to hear one and two and three and four and one and two and one and two and so that starts to sound a bit more interesting so then Bart must have said to himself well hey if I slice and dice the quavers again I'll get some quarters and then it flows beautifully so really nice so so let's play these these first notes that we've got uh, in the first part we've got an e a, a sorry a g i beg your pardon a c and an e now those three guys make a c major chord now that's called an inversion of c major and what c major is in its root position is this c e g same notes look you can then play them as e g c which is an inversion. In other words, the same three letters, but we've mixed them into a different place. The C now is at the top, look. And then we've got G, C, E. Okay, so that's our C chord. Now that chord is the whole of the first bar. And all we have to do is follow it through like this. So we've got our hand in position, look, and we're gonna go one E and, uh, we're following on, look, the, it's an arpeggio, isn't it? There we go. Now we're not we're not holding the notes on on the right hand. They're going to flow smoothly, legato style. But these guys, once we play them, they start us off each time. They, these are the the starters. Do, 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 do. And we're going to flow one after the other. Um, and this is for those of you who've watched my videos. This is the caterpillar. So if you're finding this one e and a two e and a complicated, just go. Caterpillar, 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 caterpillar. It's silly, but it works. So a funny four syllable word like caterpillar. So what I'm doing, look, I'm going C, E, holding those on, following it with the G and the C, climbing then to the E, and then repeating that chord again from the bottom up. So it's always bottom up, look. Bottom up, bottom to top, then repeat it. Now what you don't want to do, you want to hold these down. Don't do that, they want to smoothly follow on, look. One E and a two E and a caterpillar, caterpillar. Now when we go to the next bar, we then simply are going to change the notes that we play on the keyboard, not the pattern. So once you've learnt this rhythmic pattern, one E and a two E and a one, 
da. Okay, just change the note. So the next bar look is C, D, and then we've got A, D, F. That's the next chord above C major. It's D minor, look. D minor seven, thanks to the C in the bass. So again, look, I'm playing the first two notes. So it's one E and a, two E and a, caterpillar, caterpillar. So once you've played those, forget about them, hold them down. The rest of the chord, legato. Here's the next line, look. So we're gonna drop now to the B and the D. This is a G7 chord. And then we return, normally after a G chord, back to a C chord. Now this is where he, now what he's done there, if we actually play, now here's an idea, the guys, practice those chords all together, look. Just play them as blocks. And then move up, look. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So your fingers get used to playing where they're supposed to go. Because all it is, they're, they're, blo they're block chords, but broken into different parts. Hope you're enjoying this lesson, everybody. Please do hit that subscribe button and uh, ding the Liberty Bell, so that way every time we do a new video or we go live, um, you can know about it. If you're enjoying these free uh, piano lessons that I do, please do consider joining my YouTube channel as a member. It starts from just a pound a month and it helps me support the production. And if you'd like to get hold of a bonus uh, PDF with annotations on, um, you can sign up for patreon.com forward slash keyboard skills pro. And what I've done is um, the, the version of the music that I've put a link to, I've done some annotations on and um, we, we've you know put the harmonies in things. So if you want to get an annotated copy, please do sign up for um, patreon.com. Uh, many thanks for your support in advance. Now, um, on this last bar look of the second line, Bach then starts to open his hand up and we go to this very pure A minor sort of chord, okay, because we've got C and E look. But as we know, C major and A minor are related keys. So he's gonna start to move around. Bach loved to modulate. He he established this kind of real sense of being able to modulate and change and use diminished chords and, and the, the, the balance of the harmonies he came to were just absolutely gorgeous. So we now have, look, A to A and E in the middle. So we're now going to go C, E, da, 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 da. Again, look, holding, smooth. So there's that top A look. And now we're going to come down and put our thumb on this black note, which is something we don't normally do on pianos. We try not to use our thumbs on black notes as we have to, but we're going to use a D major chord. Now here, this is a modulation. So a modulation is where he's going to start to change key. Now I did mention there were no uh, black notes in the key signature, but there are some black notes in the music. So now we have an F sharp look. So it's D uh, with middle C underneath it, and then F sharp, A, D, and that's a D chord. D7, dominant seven to be. And if you listen to that C, look, I want to go here, which it does in the next bar, B and D. And then look, G, D, G. G major chord. Now, we're just gonna walk through the chords now. C major seven. Why is that C major seven, you're probably asking? Well, again, don't, don't worry too much if you don't understand, but all it means is, is that it's a C chord, the B, is seven above the bass, but in this case, Bach is using it in the bass note itself. And listen to that gorgeous dissonance look. Which then drops to A. Now, by the way, at this point, you probably noticed that the, the two notes that the left hand are playing are now in the bass clef. Why didn't they do that at the beginning? Uh, just a purely a cosmetic difference in printing music, nothing more than that. Um, so now we're in A, A minor seven, look. So if I change the G for an A, look, this seven gives the sense that it wants to go somewhere. Now we're gonna, for the first time, move our hand all the way down to D and A, so we can use our maybe top and bottom fingers here, look. And now we're gonna have D, F sharp, C. So again, this is another, what we call a dominant seventh chord. And that needs to go to G major, which it does. Now this is where Bach introduces the first of his 
diminished chords. This is gorgeous. G diminished seventh, gorgeous chord. Look. So again, look, G and B flat. And then we're gonna go E, G, and then maybe the fourth finger on the D flat. And listen to the way this changes. Look. So you notice, look, when I've played the first bar, the first half of the, the bar, it then just repeats. And then holding those two down, playing the right hand legato. Now we've got F and A, look. And again, this, uh, and, uh, now this, look, this is, a, this is a shape we've seen before. Do you remember that earlier, guys? We had that on the A, didn't we, back on bar three, four, five. You know, that chord. So this thing of the octave with one, two, three, four, the fifth in between, look. Okay, look, fifth up, fourth down. Bart knew all about these octaves and fourths and fifths, these very pure tones. So we did that there. We also did it in, where was it, bar seven with the G chord, look. It gives a nice clean sound to the harmony, almost like a musical palate cleanser. So going back to bar um, 13, where we have D minor, we've got that there, you see, that lovely, lovely sound there. So that's that chord. Then another diminished chord coming up, look. So that's an F diminished seventh. So F, A flat, D, F again. Then the B goes on the top. That's a natural this time. And diminished chords can often link to major chords or minor chords. So here we're, look, we're dropping to a C chord, but this time the E is in the bass. Ah, look, look, octave. G bar 15 up there. So that's that's something we could try and remember, isn't it? We've got these certain chord shapes going on, but this octave with the fifth, that has been used quite a lot so far. So that's good news. So I'm on bar 15 now, guys. C chord. And then we're going to put the F next to the end. This is, creates a beautiful F major 7. And remember we did that earlier, we then dropped the bass note? Well, yeah, that's happening next door. So we're down here, look, A under middle C, look now, okay. So we've got A, middle C, F, and again, play them all together. Two, one, two, like that. Dropping to D, same chord again. So you can reuse the chord. And then we're gonna go all the way down to low G, down here, play the D above, which is the fifth, and then we'll look, we're playing this G7 chord. And some of the chords you will actually play twice. Here's the C chord again. I'll use my top two fingers this time. So look, that, look, that, look, that's the opening look, that we did up here. But we're now an octave low. He's worked his way down, look. So that, that note there is C, B, A, G. Look, it's two lines, C and A. The A is the second line in the treble. There's the G. I'm going to go to C to G, and then we're going to put this B flat in. Same chord, but it's now a C dominant seventh. Dominant sevenths want to push the music to bottom F. Now, here we've got, look, an octave in the left hand. Okay, F, F. So that's a very big sound, kind of like a pedal note on an organ. And uh, what have we got on this hand? Look, uh, bar 21, A, C, E. There we go. F sharp and C, A, C, E flat. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Now he starts to use it some more in-depth harmonies now. So now we've got a C, uh, this is a kind of a, uh, this is like a dimin, and uh, no, this is a minor chord with a, oh, minor chord with a major seventh in. Oh, this is clever. So he's going G, E, B, C, E flat. So I'm thinking that's C minor, but with a major seventh in it. I mean, that's the, the clever thing about Bach, how he can, he can blend major minor harmonies together so delicately. And then we're going to go A flat and then F. So we're kind of going up a, up a half on the bass. Now this note here, look, is B natural this time. Lovely diminished sound there. 
and then we're going to drop to G, keep the F at the top, and now we're back to our G chord. Look, now this again, look, that two lines, C is one line in the treble, the next line is a jump, it's A, so the next one down in the space is G. So G7, so we're returning more to the C major harmony. So now, all the way to the end, look, you'll notice there's a G in the bass every time. And this, this is what we call a pedal note. Um, it's a singing note um, uh, that goes all the way through. I and mean, if you're playing this on the organ, you could hold this G down continuously. But just remember, the bottom note is always G, two Gs on the middle C, and it's the top note that changes with the right hand harmony. So, bar 26, gang. Here we go, G, E, G, C, E. So there's that C chord again. Next bar, we've got a, oh, this is pretty. See that, look, I've got a C, look, that can't stay there. That's a suspension, a suspending note, and you just simply drop it to B. Hear that happen, look. Play the chords all together with me, look. Drop one note. Another bar. Gorgeous look. G7. Now, lots of sharps and flats in the next bar, but let's not panic. Look, we know we've got our G anchor note. E flat, A, middle C, F sharp. That needs to climb. Da, 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 da. Oh, look, 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 look. C chord, look. Look, C, E, G, C, E, G. Just a big spread of notes. Look, there's the octave again. But this time we're using the fourth in the middle, so that's gonna, that's probably gonna drop somewhere. So the E is gonna drop down, and the F is gonna drop with it. Okay, look, I'm always, now I'm gonna drop my C to my B. So look at that, that was a really great bar lot. Watch that, so these two guys go down the top notes. And then we keep everything, we just drop those down. And then we're going to drop this to B. That has to resolve. Now, then we're going to go down again at a bit of a, this is now the ending. So this is where it starts to change ever so slightly. All the way down to bottom C, look. C, C, and we're going to get, this is a, called a tonic pedal note. All the way through, and Bart's going to put lots of clever harmonies against it and the music's fighting against this tonic finish sound. Tonic means number one, C major, it's the home note. It's trying to go home and Bart does a little diversion and then resolves, finishes everything neatly at the end with a C chord. So, bar 33, C and C. So we're now down one, two Cs down for middle C. So low C, C above, and then G, B flat, E. So this is a C7 chord, C dominant seventh. So we're finishing now for the last time with our pattern. Now this is where it changes into a, a, a semi-quaver run. So again, look, C pedal note, two, three, four. But we still follow the same pattern. The only difference is we, we break it on beats three and four. So we're gonna go uh, thumb on the F, look, A there, C and F. So it's a, a broken chord pattern of F major. So let's work this through. So we're going C, C, F, A, C, climb to F, reverse, okay, now. Now we then look, at, because we're in the treble clef there, that's the A, we're then going to the bass middle C, so we go back up one, because you won't have enough notes to finish otherwise. And then F, D, F, D. Now this is brilliant how it's going against this C note, but it's incredible how it sounds. So, so big spread, one E and a C, F, C, A, C, A, F, A, F, D, F, D. Isn't that incredible how that works? Watch again. Now you've got to start to move your fingers down. So start with the one, two, three, five pattern. And then just shunt your forefinger to F come down, four, two, one, and then lift up, put your forefinger on A to get those guys a bit lower down. Four, four, and then the last bar, 
we're going to go up here with the right hand to G7. Now G7 is the G chord. The G is the dominant chord. The dominant chord is the the chord that comes in before the finish. It creates a thing called a cadence. A cadence is a kind of musical ending. C and B natural. I mean, that is just gorgeously clashing. But listen to this, look. Same pattern again. G, B, D, F. So we're coming from down here, past middle C. That's where you got to go, look. You've got to really know where you're going there. As you move, look, your hand opens to the, the G. Look, it's line, 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 look, okay? And then bring your little finger in. Okay, so big spread. One, two, three, five, three, two. Don't worry about this clash, it'll sort itself out. So five on the D, one on the D, three, two, one lift everything up and play C octave E G C C at the top C at the bottom it makes a C chord and it finishes beautifully at the end so there we go folks a little walk through Bach's prelude in C. Gorgeous piece of music. And uh, any questions on that, put them in the comments below. Send us an email via my website, tomhorton.co.uk. And as I say, if you've enjoyed this free music keyboard lesson, please do consider joining my YouTube channel as a member. And if you'd like to get the annotated PDF with some of my sketches and ideas, uh, please do sign up and support the production of these videos at patreon.com forward slash keyboard skills pro. You can get access to all the bonus PDFs from the silver level or above, and you can also see lots of exclusive videos that aren't available anywhere else on YouTube. One final thing just before we finish, folks, is the subject of pedaling. Do you pedal or do you not pedal? It's kind of really up to you. If you pedal, you must pedal every two beats and it will then run the notes together. Some people play like that. Your piano version in a book might possibly have that in. Bach, I don't know whether Bach would have played it with the pedal. He wouldn't have played it on the piano because the piano didn't exist. So have an experiment with the pedal, but try and play it without maybe to start with because it's good development of legato playing. Thanks for watching everybody. Hit subscribe and we'll see you soon in another fun music video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.